If you got your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Matthew chapter 25. And we want to go back to the Lord in prayer here in just a minute. We want to read a few verses of Scripture to you this morning. Uh, you man, as we get into it. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish, uh, that they were... They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their lamps, in their vessels, excuse me, with their lamps. And while the bridegroom tarried, uh, they all slumbered and slept. And the night, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, and our, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and for you. But go ye rather to them that sell, and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with the him to the marriage, and the door was shut. And afterward came also the other virgin saying, Lord, Lord, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know not, uh, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Amen. As I begin to look at these verses of Scripture and begin to think about uh, these uh, things, God showed something to me the other day, and I guess I've preached on this down through my ministry several times, and uh, there's a, a good message in it, and just about every time I believe I ever, ever preached in it, there was something that kept uh, eluding me, and God showed it to me the other day as I began to pray and seek God's face for a message, you man, and look at this, and I've even got it underlined, but I don't ever remember preaching on this, just exactly like God gave it to me uh, the other day. You may look look at back in verse seven. Listen to what it said. In verse seven, it says, "And all of those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps." Amen. When I read over that, God spoke to my heart and said, "Right there is where you need to be." And I want to preach to you a little bit today by the help of God on uh, trimming our lamps. Amen. And uh, I've got a lamp setting here before. Uh, the little pulpit and and this lamp that you see here and I hope you can hope you can see it real good but the other day it just had a little bit of oil down in the bottom of it and uh, it was covered with dust and the globe was real dirty and uh, the the wick uh, was kind of crusted and everything and uh, we've been having some power outages because of the weather and and uh, my wife, she took uh, the lamp, and I had it sitting on the dining room table, and, and uh, I had tried to clean it up just a little bit, and I hadn't done a real good job. The, the globe was cloudy uh, where I'd wiped through it. And, and, uh, but anyway, she took her time and, and cleaned it up real good, and, and uh, I put some new oil, some fresh oil in the lamp and everything. And as I was looking at that scripture in there the other day, God was just showing me in my mind and everything, how uh, sometimes, you know, I mean, I thought that I had done a pretty decent job, but when my wife got through cleaning the lamp and, and doing what, what she needed to do to it, it looked a whole lot better. Uh, man, it, it, it shined, it looked good, the globe was clear, uh, everything, I mean, it just, it just it looked like a piece of furniture that you could set on a mantle, and, and she'd set it up, she cleaned off a place and set it up there in the and everything, but for the longest time, probably for the last three years or better, uh, this lamp that you see right here has been sitting in my basement. And for a little while, I had my wood shop. And uh, I don't have to tell you when it come time to clean the basement, I used a leaf blower. Uh, the, <laughs> the the dust was so it was so much on everything. And, uh, but this lamp had been sitting down there on one, an old cabinet and 
It hadn't been touched, in other words. The oil had started evaporating out of it, and it had got lower and lower and lower. And uh, uh, it hadn't been cleaned and everything. But the, the, the thing, the, what I'm wanting to get to, over to you this morning, it was still a lamp. Amen. It was a, a, an, a symbol of something that bears light. Amen. Now, we've got this burning here this morning uh, uh, before you. Amen. Uh, and our light is before God, amen. And I've got this sitting here before this little pulpit, uh, and, and it, it's a shining, amen. It's a shining tire, and you might be able to see a little bit of reflection uh, uh, here on the, on the front of the pulpit from the lamp, uh, even though I've got a lot more brighter lights in here. Uh, as we, uh, but anyway, as I thought about that, you know, it took a little work to get it to the point that it is right now. Amen. Uh, a few days ago, uh, before that, uh, I brought it up out of the basement. I could have took and lit that lamp, uh, and uh, it wasn't to give very much light because the globe was so dirty, uh, and the lamp was covered up with dust, uh, and uh, the the wick was not uh, exactly the way it needed to be, uh, and it was low on oil. Now it might have burnt just for a little while, but it wouldn't have took long to have burnt the oil out of that lamp. And the light would eventually uh, went out. Amen. Now, let's look back at our scripture and look at what it says here. It says, there was 10 virgins. Now, these 10 virgins uh, over there, if you had met these ladies on the street uh, at that day and time. Now, I realize this is a parable. Uh, if you'd, but you'd have met them. Every one of them would have been dressed just exactly the same. Amen. You wouldn't have been able to have told which, of, which one of them was wise and which one of them was foolish. Why? Because of their, their dress. In the day and time that our Lord and Savior walked down here on this earth, uh, when a young lady was a virgin, she dressed in, in the, uh, the, as a virgin. Amen. When you saw her uh, uh, out in the marketplace or whatever up until she got married, and when she got married and, and uh, her and her husband came together, then she took off the virgin's garment and laid it aside and everything, and she took upon herself the, the garment uh, of a young lady that was married that had a husband, a man. But, but these virgins, I mean, you, you didn't have to wonder who they was. You could tell by the way they were dressed. Now, dress has a lot to do with things and down here in this world. And uh, you, you hear in the Word of God it, it, that when Jesus was down there, they was a certain beggar named Lazarus. And the Bible says that Lazarus uh, uh, was laid at the rich man's gate over there. And, uh, but Lazarus, he had something that distinguished him as a beggar. Not only that he was laying there at the gate, but he was dressed as a beggar. Amen. Uh, the clothes he had on was probably dirty, uh, ragged, tore, tiring, you know, and everything. And all of the beggars... And the blind people and those people that were uh, that needed help, that was relying on somebody else to help them because they wasn't able uh, to, to do a job, they stood out uh, in the crowd. They wore a beggar's garment uh, is what they did. Uh, you can go into our cities today. A lot of our cities and just about every stop sign in a major city now has got somebody there standing with a sign and everything. And and now they don't wear beggar's garments. Some of them don't, uh, you know, every once in a while you'll, you'll pull up there and, and when you well, you got somebody there that's uh, holding up a sign that says we'll work uh, for food and everything and they've got on a $200 pair of tennis shoes, you're wondering in your mind, uh, do they, are they really hungry? You know what you mean? You know what I mean? But in the day and time that Jesus lived down here in this world, uh, amen, the beggars, they dressed like that. The Jewish people dressed alike, uh, amen. Uh, the Samaritan people dressed alike. Remember when Jesus went over, uh, he said, I must needs go through Samaria. Uh, and he went, he went that direction, amen. When he got there to the well, the Samaritan lady came uh, uh, that had a bad reputation because he was in the heat of the day. She came there. Jesus knew just exactly what time to be there in order to meet this lady, uh, amen. And the first thing she said uh, was over there when Jesus asked her for a drink, he said, uh, why are you a Jew? Now, how did she know that Jesus was a Jew? 
Amen. Because of the way Jesus was dressed. Amen. He was dressed in such a way that it, it showed forth who he was. Amen. And then in, in vice versa, when Jesus saw this lady, he automatically knew that she was a Samaritan because she was dressed in the style of the Samaritan people over there. Samaritan people were half-breeds. They were half-Jew, half-whatever. Uh, amen. Uh, they, uh, and they were looked down upon. Amen. Uh, they was alienated. They was put out of the camp uh, and everything. Uh, but they lived and they had their own place. And a Roman dressed like a Roman. The Greek dressed like the Greek. Uh, these people down there. So when you walk down the street, you didn't have to walk up to them and, and, and interview them to find out whether that who they were. You automatically knew because of the way they were dressed. All right. These virgins, 10 of them were dressed alike. So we do not understand and did not know who was who uh, here. Now then, they had a job to do. They was on, let's, let's read that. Let's look, listen to what he said. Uh, then shall uh, the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, uh, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Now, you and I today are just like these virgins. Now, I can look every one of you in here this morning and everything, and the only person that I can speak of uh, and be 100% sure is my own self. I know that I know that I know that I'm a child of God. Amen. Now, Chris taught the Sunday school lesson. He's up here just a while ago. And by his fruits and by what, uh, his demeanor, uh, his speech, uh, uh, the way, I mean, he, don't, he dresses nice and does everything, everything up there and everything. But for me to tell you that Chris is truly saved by God's marvelous grace, I can't do that. Why? Because of, by all appearance, he's Christian. By all appearance, he's a child of God. And when you're looking back at me, by all appearance, I'm a Christian. By all appearance, I'm a child of God. So it comes down to a personal thing. Amen. It's a personal relationship between us and God. Amen. Now these, these ten virgins, they had a job to do. Amen. Listen, what they, they were going forth and they had a lamp. They, had, they, had, uh, they were taking a lamp and, and a vessel. Uh, with them, amen. Now their lamps uh, uh, that ten, you know, I can in my mind, I'm I'm looking at an old timey lamp. They used to have them years ago that were metal and had a handle on it, and and all the old people had them, and it had a a a, a thing that you could mash down on it, and it would raise it up, uh, uh, the globe up a little bit inside this metal frame, and then you would light it. And then you'd let that back down, and when you'd let it back down, uh, the you know it would begin to give light. And all, the only way that those those old lamps could do a good job is if you kept the lamp trimmed. In other words, you kept it clean and kept the the wick trimmed on it to where that it would give the most light that it possibly could. Amen. Now I told you when this thing here was uh, dirty and the globe was dirty. And the, and the wick and everything like that right there was, was crusted over and, and, and it burnt down. See, what happens when it, the flame burns, uh, it causes a crust on top of the wick. In order to get the maximum burning on that thing, you have to either trim it or take and bust that crust with your fingers or whatever and get, you know, and get it cleaned off to where the, when the oil comes up out of that uh, vessel part, and begins to burn, it'll burn brighter and cleaner, and it'll, it'll give more light. Amen. Now, let's look at this. You and I today, because we have a job to do, uh, and, and Jesus told us over there, he said, uh, you are the light of the world. But in first in 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, Paul penned over there for you and I to examine ourselves. Amen. Now, uh, our Sunday school teacher down at the church this morning uh, I don't know how anybody that sat there that was listening uh, could, could say anything other than, oh, me. I mean, that's just as simple as that. I mean, you could, the, uh, you, there was no place for you to raise your head up and say uh, amen to that. It was, it was an oh, me thing. 
Amen. Because everything he touched on was the laws over in the book of, uh, uh, of <clears throat> Leviticus in chapter 20. When you go over there and read that, and all of those things over there talks about uh, the laws that God give that a man can live a clean, moral life down here. And the judgments that God gave for a lot of the stuff that we wink at today, uh, friend, uh, was uh, death back in the days of, of, of when God gave the law uh, to Moses over there. And Moses penned it, penned it down in the book of Exodus over there. Uh, it, it, a lot of them. I mean, it was just one right after another, after another, after another uh, down through there. And the penalty for breaking those laws was death. It was the death penalty. And now then, you can go out and shoot a, a half a dozen people uh, out there in the society and everything will look around and say, well, he had some problems and, and everything like, like that there. And, you know, when it says if you shed blood, you know, uh, your blood's to be shed for that. I mean, it's, it's, I mean murder is it's still against God's law. Uh, amen. But our society today has, has, has turned their back on that. And every time you turn your back on the laws of God, guess what happens? A little bit of something builds up in your globe. A little bit of something builds up on your wick. And all at once your light begins to dim down just a little bit. Well, what had happened, these here five uh, wise uh, virgins, the five wise, they not only took oil in their lamp, but they took extra oil. Amen. Now, you and I were born with a certain amount of oil and down here, and, and we're born into this world, but there comes a period in time, friend, where we burn out. And the extra oil is the oil of the Holy Spirit of God that is so that your light can burn bright continually all the way down to the end of this thing. Amen. In other words, your lamp can be clean during that time. The five wise, uh, they took their uh, position. They were virgins. They took their positions uh, to heart. In other words, they kept themselves. Amen. They didn't. Uh, they didn't do anything foolish. They didn't get out here and, and just be. Just didn't just put on the, the virgin's garment and and living like living like hell. Uh, and that's what happens a lot of times, friend, in the church world today. And I'm talking about uh, the church world. That's all the denominations wrapped up together. Uh, amen. There's a lot of people that'll put on their Sunday garment and they'll go to church and then they'll come home that afternoon and they've, they've not cleaned up, they've not repented, they've not done anything other than went and listened to the preacher for a minute or two and played on their phone or thumbed through a songbook and said, I wish you'd hurry, I'm hungry. Uh, and we want to get in line down at, uh, at the restaurant before everybody else gets there. Uh, and everything, and you walk out of that church and you're still just as filthy as you was when you walked into the church. Amen. When, if you had examined yourself before you ever went, there's a good chance you might not have went. But see, people have took uh, the world and for everything that the world has offered, and, and, and see, we're living in a time right now that's spoken of in the word of God, uh, over there that uh, evil is good and good is evil. We're, uh, th that's what we're looking at. And what, what caused that? What caused that? A long time ago, there was a feller sought to exalt himself above the throne of God. And his name was Lucifer. And God cast him out. And when God cast him out, the first thing he went to do was to destroy man whom God had created. Now, the relationship that God had with man, with Adam and Eve over in the garden, was a perfect relationship. Uh, it was without sin. He, uh, they didn't, Adam and Eve didn't know they were naked. Uh, uh, it was a time of, of, of perfection uh, in this world. Amen. But Satan, and when Satan came in, first thing he done, he decided to destroy it. So he set forth him a recipe. He wrote a recipe down. If I can have her to see that fruit, see me handle that fruit, see me take a bite of that fruit, and, and see me uh, uh, tell her that there's nothing wrong with that fruit. It's good and everything. He took her five senses that God give her 
and he used them against her and Adam that was there. Adam was with her. Bible says he was. And, and, but Adam kept his mouth shut. He shouldn't now see. Adam was messing up too. Adam could have spoke up at any given time and said, listen, Eve, God told us not to eat of this and we're not going to and everything. But God, now listen to what I'm saying. But God knew when he made Adam and Eve and he placed them in that garden, he knew they would fail. Amen. So he allowed mankind to fail. Why? Because before the foundation of the world was ever made, Jesus said, Father, I'll redeem them back. He's what he said. He said, I'll go. He said, I'll suffer and I'll redeem them back. I'll be their redemption, friend. But because of that and because that you and I today uh, have allowed things to creep into our lives and everything, there, there's payday coming. A preacher mentioned that a, a little bit down there today. Uh, the world that we're living in today is right on the brink of being done. Amen. I'm not talking about uh, the end of this thing. I'm talking about the dispensation of grace. This is the grace of God. Today uh, is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. God's given us some grace. Amen. Down here. Now, these five foolish uh, that he's talking about here, uh, they were operating uh, uh, in a sense in, in God's permissive will. That's what he was doing, what they were doing. They, they, they didn't have enough oil uh, to get them all the way through, but they had just enough to look good before the other world and before everybody else. And they was happy with being uh, one of the virgins that uh, had a job. They were happy with, uh, uh, with all of these things. But when the rubber met the road, friend, the Bible says, then they all slumbered and slept, in other words. And at midnight, the cry was made. And at midnight, the cry was made. Uh, the five uh, uh, foolish, uh, 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 they trimmed their lamps. In other words, they, 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 they had their lamps and, and everything. And in my mind, I was thinking of this year, and I've seen them before, but I've not seen one in a long time. The, they made a, a, a lamp thing that would slide down over this and everything. And, and what it would do, it would, you, know, you, could, you could raise it back up off of it. It's like, kind of like turning on an awful a light switch. But it was a thing that you could slide down over it and, and the light would still be burning uh, and everything inside. But then when you raised it up off of it, you could see the light. And, and, and now using that as, a, as an illustration, maybe their lights were sitting there burning while that, uh, uh, with, the, with the, the, the thing down over it where that they could slumber and sleep where they wouldn't be annoyed by the lamp of burning because it, but at midnight when they trimmed their lamps, in other words, when they went to, went to light their lamp or pull it up, their lamps had gone out. He said their lamps were up, they'd run out of oil. Now they had a vessel. That vessel that they had was to carry oil in, extra oil. Amen. Jesus became that vessel that you and I might not ever, ever, ever run out of oil. Amen. He is the oil. He is the, the, the spirit. Uh, he is the very God of heaven, friend, uh, for you and I, that me and you uh, might always have our lamps burning, that we might always be a light for God uh, out here. And, and it's his word that cleanses us. Now, when I read there in a minute ago to you in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5, Paul's talking to the church and he said to examine yourself. And then he goes on to say in that same verse, to prove yourself. Uh, uh, is, is our faith really real? Think about that. Is our faith really real? Now, there's a multitude of people out there in the world today that thinks that just because they go to church, just because that they give, just because that they're a member of, of some, uh, some committee in the church or, or something other like that there, all the way down to the bell ringer and the person that cleans the floor uh, in the church, they think just because that they're affiliated with that church that everything's all right between them and God. And that's not so. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Friend, uh, when you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart and soul, uh, God lights your lamp. 
And when God lights your lamp, you begin to burn. Amen. And then God gives you uh, the spirit when you, uh, in you, that oil, that fresh oil. Uh, every, time you go to the, every time you go to pray, God will give you fresh oil. Amen. Every morning when you get up and you say, God, I, say, I thank you, Lord, for another wonderful day you've given us, another day of grace and everything. And, and you begin to speak to God and pray. God gives you what? Fresh oil for that day. Uh, he gives you all that you stand in need of uh, so that you can burn just as bright as you can be. And then when you lay down to n- of a night, amen, uh, and everything, and you decide to slumber and sleep, you'll cut it down just a little bit. Look at that. Now, it's still a burning, but you probably can't see that on the camera. Now, they're slumbering and sleeping. We are. We all do. But see, the lamp has not went out. It's still there. There's times in our life and where that we have to regenerate, that we have to, uh, that we have to rest, we have to you know, get our minds focused and cleared and everything. But then when that clock goes off the next morning, we turn it back up. And then we're a, we're a bright and shining light for another day that God has given. The five foolish they didn't have any oil. Their lamps had gone out. They found out right real quick that the outfit that they had on was not enough. Just to, just to have on the outfit didn't mean nothing. Just to carry a lamp didn't mean nothing. To have a vessel with no oil in it didn't mean nothing. Now, let me read verse, uh, uh, check another verse of Scripture. The book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 1 through 9. But uh, there's one of the verses in there, verse... Uh, let me just read that to you. Uh, I know I use chapter 8 a lot and everything, but it's, it's amazing what's in Romans chapter 8. Amen. Well, first of all, you'll find the word spirit used 21 times in the book of, of chapter 8 of the book of Romans. Amen. But listen to what it says. There is now uh, no condemnation to them that are in Christ who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Now, those five wise, there was no condemnation whatsoever to them. Why? Because when the bridegroom came, they went in. They trimmed their, trimmed their lights. They had oil. They had enough oil, sufficient oil, and they went right on in uh, to the marriage of the Lamb. Amen. But the five foolish, because their light had gone out, because they never had nothing to start with, they didn't have enough oil in their vessel. You're right. Listen to what it says over here. And I won't read all of that. In verse 9, listen to what it says. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, that ye be, if so be that the spirit of God dwelleth in you, in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Now, those five foolish, they, they didn't have the spirit that they needed. They didn't have that oil they needed in order to go in. But then they was told over there, they said, go to them that sell. Well, I hate to make it sound like this, but I'm, I'm a salesman today. Amen. You know what I'm selling you this morning? Friend, I'm selling you enough oil to get you into a place called heaven. Amen. The five wise, somewhere or another, they listened. Somewhere or another, they got prepared. Somewhere or another, they, they saw that everything that they was hearing was real. And because it was real and because it was the truth, uh, amen, uh, they got ready. And five of them uh, uh, was a, a, a picture of Christianity. And five of them, the foolish over there, was a picture of deception. Amen. Uh, they were deceived uh, in, into thinking that all they needed was the clothes, the lamp, and a vessel. And they all dressed alike. They all looked alike. They all acted alike. I mean, now, uh, uh, somebody that is a transgressor that goes to, goes to church to be seen, goes to church to be heard, they can stand up and sing, oh, how I love Jesus, uh, that would make a mockingbird ashamed of itself. They, I, mean, just, I, mean, they just, I mean, they can raise the rafters. Now, don't get me wrong of what I'm saying now, if you're a spiritual person and you know 
uh, the message that they're singing and the song they're singing and everything, not who's singing it and everything. You know, back when I was growing up, there was a jukebox in every restaurant in the county. Uh, you'd go in there and you'd drop your money in that thing and everything, and, and everybody played what they wanted to hear and everything. And that jukebox looked the same just about everywhere you went. I think the same company must have put them in everywhere. But uh, uh, they all looked the same. And, and you put your money in that there and it played a song and everything. The record that was in there was what was making the sound come from the jukebox. Well, whoever's up or singing, whether they're saved or not, the song that they're singing will bear witness of itself if it's a good song. Amen. If it's biblically based, good song, and it's uplifting the name of Jesus, and it's uplifting the Spirit of God, and and uh, if you're, uh, you can literally enjoy it regardless of who's singing it. Amen. You think about this. Uh, back in back in Johnny Cash's day, and he's done and gone. Back in Johnny Cash's day, he sung songs about Folsom Prison Blues and, and all kinds of different songs. But then uh, not too awful long ago, I was listening to the radio and Johnny Cash was singing uh, some gospel songs that I really enjoyed. Now, I don't know whether Johnny Cash at that time, now Johnny Cash, he made things right with God. And far as I know, he left this world prepared to meet God. But at the time he sung those songs, he was probably living like hell out here in this world, just to, just to make it just to make it plain. But the songs that he sung uplifted me. Why? Because it wasn't the man. It was the song. Amen. It's not the character, but it's who we're talking about that, mean, that makes the difference. The five wise and the five foolish, they had, they had some. Who, who, was they, who was they representing? The bridegroom. They were getting ready to meet the bridegroom. They were dressed like the bride and everything. And, and that's who's going to be there, friend. If, you, if you're wise and you've asked Jesus Christ to come into your heart, uh, we're all dressed just alike. We're robed in the righteousness of God through the blood of Jesus Christ. We all are. Amen. And then the Bible says that we have the oil in our vessel. We have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit of God down inside of us. And one of these days when the cry is made, you're going to hear these words, enter in thou good and faithful servant. You're going to hear that. But if there's no oil in your vessel, friend, you're going to hear a bad, you're going to hear another one. Of our, Depart from me, I never knew you. I know you not. Amen. So we think about keeping our lamps clean, keeping our wick trimmed where we'll shine as bright as we can and everything. But now, Christian people can get dirty. Just like we allowed this lamp to get dirty sitting down there in the basement, being used. You can take and be saved by God's marvelous grace. And God will put you on a shelf somewhere or another. If I could see that, all right. See that, that let's say that's an empty shelf. Well, and I'm going to put you over here on a shelf. God does that and everything. Why? Because you've got unconfessed sin in your life. And because of unconfessed sin, you're getting down lower and lower and lower. And you think, boy, I, I, I believe I can make it if I can just keep it burning that much. But then you get lazy on God. You get to the point where that you can't, uh, you can't really have a good conversation with people anymore. And you've allowed all kinds of things to come into your life. And you've compromised with the world uh, and, and everything. And you say everything's all right. First thing you know, it gets down just a little bit lower. Okay, and it's down really low now. Then all at once, the Holy Spirit of God will come by whew, and blow your light out. Now, that lamp right there, if it was dark in here, would just be sitting there. That's all it would be, just be sitting there. Friend, are you just sitting on the church pew and not a contributing anything to the worship of God because you're so dirty inside? Jesus, when he walked down here on this earth, just a few days before they took him and crucified him, Jesus stood over there and the religious, crew, the, the religious crowd of that day he called them a generation of vipers. 
He called them a whited wall. Uh, he called them all of these things. Amen. And because he called them that, and I want to apologize, I left my phone laying over there. Uh, uh, but anyway, uh, he called them all of these things and everything, and, and, and the, they didn't know what to do. I'm not apologizing to you, friend, because I'm saying to you, if you're not clean before gone, God's liable to blow your light out and bury you in an early grave, and you'll be saved, yet so as by far. And I'm talking about saved people today. I'm talking about uh, church members. Amen. I'm talking about somebody that's truly been to Calvary. Amen. You can get that, you can get that way because God is a jealous God. And he said, I will have no other gods before me. If this world has become your God and the things of this world has become your God, God, watch out. God's liable to bury you in an early grave. Amen. That's a message God's laid on our heart today. Amen.